In this tutorial, I'll show you how to animate your own paperless animation in Toon Boom Harmony. I won't go over every single detail about how to get started in Toon Boom, there's plenty of beginner's tutorials for that, but let's just get started with the process of creating our first animation. So when you first start Toon Boom, there's a couple preferences that I highly recommend you turn on before getting started. And to edit our preferences, we go under Edit, and preferences. Or on a Mac, it would be Harmony Preferences. And here you can edit your shortcuts. So you can search for a shortcut, say zoom, using these arrow tools to navigate through. So here we have zoom in, which is number two. And if I wanted to change that, I could click this and change it to whatever shortcut I want, or I can reset it to default by clicking the default. So that's super useful for setting up your program the way you want it to be. Also, if you're used to Flash or Toon Boom Studio, you can select this up here to select a different hotkey set. I highly recommend though that you try and get used to the Toon Boom Harmony shortcuts because they're laid out in such a way you don't have to navigate very far on your keyboard. But the most important one I recommend you turn on is under General and it's this focus on mouse enter option. So make sure that's turned on and I'll show you what that means. So Toon Boom shortcuts rely on what window you have selected. So you can see this red outline around my camera view right here. But if I were to go into my timeline, you'll see because it's focus on mouse center, I now have a red outline around my timeline. Same with these other windows here. So I'll show you the easiest example. I'll press two to zoom in, one to zoom out. And then if I go down to my timeline, I'll press two to zoom in and one to zoom out. So when you're animating in Toon Boom Harmony, you need to be conscious of where your mouse is at all times. So if you're drawing and you wanna zoom in and out, or press Control and Alt to bring up the rotation tool, you wanna to make sure that you're in your drawing window. Another preference you wanna set up if you have Toon Boom Advanced or Premium is under the Advanced Tools. And it's this top one right here, Support Overlay and Underlay Art. So what that does, basically it just turns on these art layers down here. So by default, there may be only two of these available but you wanna use all the options that you have. So make sure that's turned on. And I have mine down at the bottom. By default, it's probably over here. And the way I drug that is I just drug this bar up here and just moved it down here. If you ever wanna edit your workspace, you can click these arrows to expand or minimize. And you can also click and drag these tabs anywhere you want them to go. So you can really customize your workflow this way. If you ever want to reset it back to default, you can go up to Windows, Restore Default Workspace. If you wanted to save your workspace, you can go down to Workspace and Save Workspace As. I usually just like to use my name. Click OK. And that way, if things get moved around or reset, you can always set it back to the way you wanted it. First, we want to set up our scene. Right now, our scene length is about 60 frames, which is not that much. We probably want more than that. So to extend our scene, we're going to go up to Scene, Scene Length. And for now, we'll just set it to like 120. If you ever wanted to change your scene settings, for example, your frames per second, you don't change it here. Here, if you change it, it'll just be temporary. If you wanted to change your scene settings, like its aspect ratio or frames per second, we go under Scene, Scene Settings, and here's where we can set all that stuff, which is right here. Now, the first thing we want to add is what's called a color card. And we do that by going down to our timeline, holding down on this plus button here, and selecting color card. Now, you want to make sure that you have no layer selected. I had this drawing layer selected, so it set up the color card as its parent. We don't want that, so undo. Make sure we have nothing selected. Go to plus, color card. And it'll add it at the bottom. So what a color card does is you can think of it as just a colored background, like a piece of paper. If you wanted to change the color of it, you could double click on it. Usually I like to do a bit more of a gray color just so it's not so glaring on the eyes. So we'll set it to here. And here is where I'm using my multicolor wheel. Uh, you might see the single color wheel right here. And usually I'll set this to hue and saturation by clicking this button here. This is probably most familiar if you've used Photoshop or any other painting program. But I prefer to use the multicolor wheel when I'm picking colors just because it gives me a few more options. Once we set our color, we'll just click the X to close it. It'll save automatically. Click close again. And now we have our color card. And we don't want to select it accidentally. See these gray boxes? That means we have our color card selected. So we'll go over here to the lock and just click the lock to lock it. And now we don't accidentally select our color card. 